Hey guys, so if you're new to my channel, uh, I make videos every week and I try to focus on making videos that are helpful to the cancer community, uh, anything like that. And, but I also make fun travel videos and a vlog. So if you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you can stay in touch with me and be up to date with everything that I do here. Today, we're gonna talk about ways to stay positive during cancer. I know I struggled very hard with it the first time and even harder with the second time. So I'm just gonna go over a few things that helped me. I know everybody is different. So maybe some things that helped me may not help you exactly, but I'm just here to give you a few ideas. So maybe something can. So this first thing is something that I've actually always told myself. It wasn't until I got diagnosed that I started thinking it or trying to think this way. It's something that I've always done. And it's to tell yourself that things could always be worse. And I actually tell my siblings this a lot of the time, you know, complaining over something cooked for dinner that you don't like, you know. Yeah, you don't like it, you don't want to eat it. And you just got to think there's people in other countries that don't even have an option. They have nothing to eat at all. They're starving all day. They're not even getting clean water. So the way I think of things is... It could always be worse. Somebody in the world always has it better than you and somebody always has it worse than you no matter who you are. So that's a, a good thing to think when, when you're in a hospital bed and you're miserable or, and you can't get out of bed or you're on you know 24 hours of chemotherapy or you're doing radiation and you're laying there for like 20 minutes and can't move and you're just thinking the most horrible things. Just remember, wow, there is somebody out there that has it worse than me. Because there really is. Another way to stay positive is to be realistic. But when you're realistic, you still want to stay positive. I know there's been times when people are like, oh, you're going to beat it. You're good. You're good to go. And then I'm thinking in the back of my head, especially because it came back already once. I'm thinking, oh, well, it could come back again. So really, I don't know. You're always going to feel like that. Some people... 100% think they can do it and they do it which is great but not everyone is that strong in that matter you're gonna think okay I still need to be realistic and being realistic is good one thing about being realistic is looking in the mirror at yourself I know there's been a lot of times where I just catch myself looking in the mirror and times that I felt like I wasn't looking at myself that wasn't me I wasn't familiar with the person that I was looking at and that was a struggle for me. And what you need to realize when when you're doing that and you're nitpicking at all these things, I have no hair, I look sick, this medication is bad for my skin, you know, you just have to look in the mirror and realize what you do have, not what you don't. Another way to stay positive during this is telling yourself that you can handle this challenge. I'm sure this isn't the only challenge in your life that you've come across, whether it be breakups or bills or jobs or anything. There's always a challenge in your life and you just have to tell yourself this is just one more of those challenges and you can do it. Not everyone in the world is going to experience what you are experiencing, but that's only going to make you that much stronger. It's going to give you an upper hand on people and say, hey, I've actually done something that a lot of people haven't. and that's one really positive way to look at it. That's, that's what helps me out every day. And I know I hear from my doctors or my family when they see the scars on my chest because, you know, I've had biopsies and I've also had a port and a catheter and everything like that. And they're always like, oh, let's get those fixed. Let's cover them up. You know, we don't want them to be so noticeable like that. But the way I look at it is a trophy and I'm proud. I'm proud to wear these scars and that they are my scars and they remind me of all the hard times and that just makes it that much better so if you're going through it and you're struggling and you can't find ways to stay positive just just look forward and say you know what one day i'm gonna have beat this and it's gonna be a crazy story to tell and something awesome to look back on and to know that you were down here doing all this and now you're up here and now you have you can give people advice and you can be that much more help to someone who, who needs it. So that's one good thing to remember and a really good way to stay positive. So we're talking about staying positive, but if you're not able to, if you don't know how, you've tried everything, 
the one thing that you can always rely on is, is reaching out to others for help. I know there are times when I didn't want to talk to anybody. Uh, my family or doctors would say, hey, how are you doing? And I would just be like, good. Because why would I waste my energy trying to explain something to them that they won't be able to understand? So at times I'd keep to myself, but there are people out there who do understand. There are a lot of organizations where you can connect with people that have the same cancer as you and can actually understand you and understand what you mean when you feel a certain type of way. So don't be afraid to reach out to other people. It's, it's good for you to realize that, hey, this is too big for one person to handle. It's, it's not normal for one person to handle everything. Not all of this is just made for you to go through alone. So don't be afraid. Don't feel like you are a burden on anyone because that, that was a challenge for me too. To think, no, I don't want to bother them with my problems. They really don't want to hear it. But half the time, they feel the same way. They don't want to ask you and and be curious about it because they don't want to feel like they're being a burden on you. So talking is a good thing because you could be thinking some way and they could be thinking the exact same way about themselves and then there's never any communication. So don't be afraid to reach out, whether it be family or a complete stranger. Uh, it, can, it can help and it can make a huge difference. Another way to try and stay positive is to be thankful for what you have. For me, for the first time I had cancer, I was in the hospital doing chemotherapy five days in a row. I was hooked up to the machines in bed and I had everything hooked up to my port. I had a shower with it, dress with it, everything for five days. And every holiday I was actually there because I had six cycles. So I was there for my very first cycle. I was there for Thanksgiving. Then I was there for Christmas Eve. My birthday's in January, February, Valentine's Day. March was St. Patrick's Day. April was Easter. So you just have to stay there and say, hey, you know what? I'm still thankful. Like I remember my Thanksgiving, it, it was a hospital meal and it was the most disgusting thing I've ever had in my life. And that kind of just comes back to the very first thing we talked about when you talk about, you know, somebody has it worse than you. So you just got to be thankful and it is hard. It's a challenge, but it just pays off in the end when you're done with all of it and you get to go home and eat your own food and stuff like that. Take a shower in your own shower, sleep in your own bed. It makes you thankful. So you just have to look forward to that because it'll just make you appreciate things that much better. Another way to stay positive is creating new hobbies. Say you're in the hospital or you're out of the hospital, but you're still battling cancer. You're not able to go back to work. It's a great time to start new hobbies. If you're young like me, you can take online classes. You can start doing guitar classes, anything like that. If you're a little bit older, what about sewing? There's painting. I know one lady that her children would bring her art supplies when she was in the hospital and she would paint these beautiful canvases. And it's okay if you suck because if you have all the time in the world, then that's all the time in the world to practice and you'll only get better. You might end up discovering there's a certain talent you had that you never knew that you had. So it's a great opportunity for you to start new hobbies. One very important way to stay positive is to keep humor in your life. I know for me, this process has made me a more serious person and I look at things a little bit more serious because I'm a very outgoing, funny person. And to stay happy and, and stay, you know, with good humor will really help you out on a positive note. I know that I've had nurses tell me, wow, you're really great to work with because I'm not miserable to them, I'm not mean to them because all they do is try to help. So you just gotta stay positive, watch funny shows, do something funny, have someone tell you a joke. Just stay goofy, like don't, don't be too serious about it. You just, you gotta, it's, cancer's not funny, but when you have a smile every day, it does make a difference. So just remember to stay humorous, stay, stay entertaining, stay funny. Be someone that people want to talk to. <laughs> I know it's hard to be funny, but I mean, just know, know someone that is, meet someone who is, and keep them by your side because 
If you're having a bad day, you don't want to talk to anybody. If someone's over in the corner making funny faces, they don't stop, like, it might make a difference for you. And the last thing I'm going to talk about for staying positive when battling cancer is to put your cancer into perspective. I know that every single person is at a different stage, has a different cancer, is doing a different treatment. There's a million different things out there. But keep yours in perspective. Think, hey, I'm stage two. Wow, I'm lucky that they caught this sooner. Because if I was stage three or stage four, things, the outlook may not be as good. I may have to do more vigorous treatment. If you're at stage four, then you still gotta know, hey, at least they caught it. At least I was able to figure out what is wrong with my body and try and find a solution for it. And I think that is a very important thing to do is just keep it in perspective and say, hey, say you've done everything there is to do and things aren't looking that good. You can use everything that you have been through to help somebody else, to help someone else who's at the same stage. You guys could help each other and it could make a very huge difference in just one person's life. And just one thing to keep in mind is everything happens for a reason. I'm not sure if everybody in the world believes that, but whenever something bad happens to me, just like get in a car accident or anything bad at all, not even cancer related, I always tell myself everything happens for a reason. And that helps me on very dark days when I'm just miserable and I just don't think I can do it anymore and I'm just over all of it. Just say, you know what, everything happens for a reason and I gotta hold out to see what that reason is. And most of the time it's for a very good reason or else it wouldn't have happened to you. So these are all of my ways to stay positive during cancer and even after cancer. So if you guys have any questions for me or would like to know anything else, just comment below and I can help you with that. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.